Welcome to the third video uh, accompanying the notes on solving indeterminate structures using superposition. Uh, this one will go through uh, the rotation equations, integrating them uh, to determine our uh, deflection equations, and then we will be uh, using our boundary conditions for our deflections, namely that we don't have any A or C for either of these beams, to determine our constants of integration. To determine the deformation equations, uh, we're going to need to use that the deflection is the integral of rotation. And in this case, uh, or in the case of the uniformly uh, loaded beam, uh, that's going to end up being 1 over the Young's modulus of the second moment of inertia as always times x cubed times kip, just one kip, minus x to the fourth over 24 feet kip plus C1 times X plus C. What are we on as far as uh, constants of integration go? Uh, I think 5? C5? Does that make sense? I think it's 4. Whoop. So when we look at this, unless this immediately start getting rid of our constant integration, we've got that, um, well, the deflection of point A has to be zero, and that's going to be, that's just going to be C4, right? So C4 is zero. Get rid of it. We also have a second. Uh, boundary condition for uh, this equ uh, equation for the uh, distributed load, right? And that is that at 12 feet, it has to equal zero. And that's going to be a bit much, but that is enough to give us what C1 is, uh, right? It is. So that gives us that C1, if we punch all of this in, we're going to have oh, 3 times 144 square feet minus, ooh, yeah, let's just call it 12 feet cubed over 6 equals negative C1. Equals 72. So C1 is negative 72. Kip, what is that for this? That's going to be kip feet squared for C1. Now, for this problem, because once we have C1, guess what? All of this is figured out. That's zero. This is negative 72 kip feet squared. Uh, and then these are either x or, or, or constants. So the deflection, ooh, due to this load, we've got that now. We're good. The deflection due to this load, we're still figuring that out. Integrating this function, we're going to have by over e and i times x2 cubed over 12 
plus some constant of integration that we knew that we had before, C2 times x2, plus a new constant of integration, C5, I believe. Um, and this, similarly to C4, we can immediately dismiss. Right? We can dismiss this as zero because there's a pin right there, there's a pin right there, it's the same, you know, the same geometric being, there's just different loadings, there's a, so, there's a pin there, C5 has to be zero. We're golden. But, this only goes to B, we don't know what the deflection is at B, so we can't find C2 yet. What we can do, though, is start working on the deflection from B to C. Uh, that's a function of x2, and that's going to be equal to, well, b, y, not b2. I'm the youngest modulus in the second moment of inertia. x2 cubed over 12 minus 3 feet over 2 x2 squared plus 9 feet squared times x2 plus c2 also times x2 plus some constant migration c6 and uh, that is going to be um, something Right, that's not going to be zero because there isn't a pin uh, at B. Okay, fine. There is, but not in this beam. All right, the beam that we're considering does not have uh, that roller there. And what we can do is say that the deflection at B that we find with this equation has to be the same as the deflection we find at B with this equation. So let's do that. So if we're going to use that, we're going to say that y a b six feet. We're just going to say that's equal to six feet. There we go. Is equal to c six. And I meant to write that in red. So let's just go ahead and say that that is 6 feet cubed over 12 plus C2 times 6 feet. I don't think there was any real needs to simplify that any further, to be honest. So from here, uh, we're finding that we've got just one, uh, one constant integration left that we need to determine. Uh, fortunately, we have one boundary condition left uh, that we need to work with, and that is that at point C, C, a, B, which is uh, deflection at AB of, at, at BC, sorry, of six feet. That has to be zero. So that's going to be quite a bit uh, that we need to, to do as far as, as plugging that in, but if we plug six feet into here, 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 here and then plug this into here, we can get C2. And I'm, you know, uh, I could spare you all that, but I, I won't. Zero is equal to, yeah, BY over EI. Amazingly, none of those are allowed to be zero in this case. Um, so we're going to have it be six feet 
cubed divided by 12 minus 3 times uh, 6 feet squared. Divide that by 2 plus C2 minus 9 feet squared uh, times 6 feet minus 6 feet cubed over 12 plus whatever C2 is again times 6 feet and that is all gonna, you know, I will yada yada this point. And that's gonna tell us that C2, after all that, is just 9 kip feet times, like per. Uh, oh, wait, no. It's on the inside, don't worry. We took the BY out. So it's just nine kip feet. So now we've got all of those done. What do we need to do at this point? Well, what we need to do at this point uh, is apply a new boundary condition. And that is uh, that the deflection at B, so in all this time, we've been looking at these as parallel problems. This is one problem, this is another. Now we need to combine them. We need to combine them into one problem like this. <clears throat> drawing that line. And then we've got EY right there. And what we want with this is we want to have the deflection of B be zero because that will fulfill the boundary condition provided by the roller which we remove from here at the very beginning but it's there. This is an indeterminate problem. Remember from the beginning? It hasn't been as long for you as it's been for me, probably. So at the beginning, we had that roller. We removed it. But when we add these all back in, we're solving this indeterminate problem. So uh, now all we have to do is say that the sum of this deflection and, say, this deflection or this deflection, it doesn't really actually matter that much. In fact, we didn't actually have to finish uh, this uh, for BC other than using uh, that boundary condition to determine what C2 is. Okay. We need to set these as equal and opposite at point uh, B. So let's do that on the next page.